Hello there, my beautiful internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me here today for a highly anticipated, hotly requested video. I, as a real life amputee, am going to be reviewing scenes from Grey's Anatomy where Arizona Robbins, who is one of the main characters, loses her leg and also becomes an amputee and they kind of portray her journey. So I'm gonna be taking a look at those scenes and giving a little bit of commentary to you, my lovely viewer. Let me know in the comment section down below if you would like to see this type of video become a series on my channel. I think it might be kind of fun to go through and review different TV shows shows and movies that portray amputation or disability and give you my two cents on them. So without further ado, let's dive in. I just said without further ado, but what I meant to say was uh, I would like to thank our sponsor today, Surfshark. I will be telling you a little bit more about them in a little bit, but now actually let's dive in. If you've never watched Grey's Anatomy before, these scenes are going to be pretty self-explanatory, I think, but basically one of the main characters, Arizona, gets in a really bad accident and has to face losing her leg. Another character you're gonna see is her wife, Callie, and they kind of go through this journey together. I thought that this was an interesting element to take a look at too, because I have a spouse going through this with me, and let's talk about how accurate or not they got things. I'm gonna be a tough critic. No matter what we do. If the infection goes to the bone, it'll be hard to treat. And eventually you're looking at bone loss. I'm gonna have to say, officially I'm recommending amputation. Show me them. Yeah. Show them to me. I withhold consent. I withhold consent before you drug me or sedate me. I give n nobody permission to cut off my leg. And certainly not some Yahoo and dump truck. I don't. So my situation is a little bit different than Callie's. Mine was an elective amputation, meaning that I got to choose the time and the place. Uh, there wasn't an infection involved. I had many, many surgeries on my ankle, was in a lot of pain, couldn't do anything I wanted to do, and there were no good options left. So I eventually made the call, let's do this. But many people are in another situation where it's either emergency and they wake up without a leg or they're gonna die if they don't get it. And I think the mental anguish that you go through on both sides of it is gonna be very different. Like trying to make the decision to chop off your leg versus waking up with without one, like those are both tremendously difficult, but I think have very different tolls on you. But a girl in a jar. Oh, I can't keep doing this alone, Arizona. I just can't. Get up. Get the hell out of bed and snap out of this. If not for me, then for Sophia, because she lost a parent last night. And I lost my best friend and I will be damned if I lose you too. Snap out of this. Snap out of this. I can fight. I'm gonna pause for just a moment and say that that is not accurate visually, emotionally, yes, visually, no. So when you have an amputation, there is a lot of swelling that goes to that part of your body for quite some time. And by quite some time, I mean many months. So her leg looking about that size is not at all what it would look like. It would be much more swollen. It would be like very visually huge in comparison to her other leg. And it makes it look like it's almost like already shriveled. It takes a long time to for that swelling to go down and then you'll eventually lose more muscle mass and your leg will always be changing shape over the course of you being an amputee. But close to surgery, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of swelling. Do you know what this money could mean for us? For Sophia. She won't have to take out loans for med school. It's funny, so the comment that Callie is making right there is in reference, I believe, to like an insurance payout or a lawsuit or something like that. And her like excitement over it, like, oh my God, we're getting a bunch of money. And Arizona's completely like, like dead inside. Uh, yeah, I can definitely relate to as well. It's funny, there's really no amount of money that can buy back the freedom of mobility, the freedom of having a body that doesn't hurt. And I think that that can be kind of difficult to understand from the outside. People will make jokes about like, yeah, I'd cut off my right hand if I could, you know, have a million dollars or whatever. And it's just, it's not really accurate, but I think it's common to think that money can fix things when it really can. You know what I want more than anything? I want to know what you're thinking, what you want, just So what you see there with Callie reaching for her and her kind of recoiling, on the surface, I think that can look like, you know, they have like a relationship problem or she doesn't want her anymore or something like that. But what I experienced after losing my leg, and I didn't even think this would be the case, was a lot of new insecurity in myself, insecurity in thinking that um, I was too much trouble to be married to, insecurity in thinking my husband 
couldn't possibly be attracted to me anymore and that can lead to pushing someone away. It's not that Arizona doesn't still love Callie, it's that she isn't sure how much she loves herself and how much anyone else could love her. At least that's what I get from it. Okay, well the home healthcare nurse will be here soon. Try to be nice. Don't <laughs> throw things at this one, okay? Just let her help you. Just let her help you is a very easy sentence to say and a very difficult one to put into practice. When you've lost your freedom temporarily or permanently, God, it's a punch in the gut to ask for help. It's so hard to let people really be there for you to admit that you need anything from anyone else. I'm still very much a work in progress accepting help as anyone who knows me in real life can tell you. It's not something I'm super great at, but I'm trying to become more gracious about it and more open to asking for help when I actually need it. Arizona? Where are you? Are you okay? Where's the nurse? I, I didn't like her, so I fired her. <gasps> this picture of her sitting on the floor, clearly not really capable of doing whatever she's trying to do. Oh, it hits a little too close to home. I have been found in many a position like that because I think, you know what? Willpower will get me through this. I can do it on my own. I don't need help, gosh darn it. And then I crash and burn and then the embarrassment is real. Did you fall? Are you, are you okay? Do I look okay? I'm sitting in a pool of my own urine. I'm putting you in the shower. No, just get it out! Hey! Do not talk to me that Please. way! I've definitely had moments of utter rage at everybody and everything, especially the people who are trying to make things better because of that sense of helplessness. It takes a long time to adjust to and realize that you aren't helpless and that asking for help isn't making you weaker, but man, uh, this hits so close to home. <laughs> That's one thing that I think is really important to remember if you're going through this alongside someone else is that it's not just happening to you. When I went through the surgeries that I went through and all that, it was usually all about me, which is great. I mean, I needed care, I needed support, but I think people forget that there are people on the periphery who need support too. Like I really appreciated when people would check in on my husband because he's going through this too. He didn't lose his leg, but he's dealing with all of the fallout of it, all of the appointments and expenses and emotions, and it's different for him too. And so I'm glad that they pointed this out because it's not just you who goes through a significant life change like this. It's the people who love you too. Quick note, see the plastic thing that's around her leg? That's called a check socket. That's before you get your permanent leg. It's like this thick, heavy plastic. Uh, you usually end up with one of those for like, I don't know, six, eight weeks. It varies for everybody. I remember getting my permanent leg after walking around on that for so long. I was amazed at how light it was because like I said, that, that plastic is really heavy and carbon fiber or basalt or whatever they use to build the socket is usually really light. So it's like this great relief of like, oh my God, this feels so much better. I'm not sure what the context for this scene is, but sort of like sneaking around to try to figure out how to walk and what that's gonna feel like for you. Something I definitely relate to. Having time when people weren't watching to try out my leg and try to take a step was vital because in the appointments when you're like getting your leg, getting your prosthesis, getting it fit, people are scrutinizing you in your every move to see like how you're walking and uh, if you're walking the right way or walking the wrong way and how it feels and what it looks like. It's a lot of communication. It can be really overwhelming. And the moments that I had by myself to like see that leg on me try to mentally make peace with that, try to adjust, see what putting pressure on it slowly felt like. Uh, I definitely did a lot.
There were many days where I didn't want to go outside, especially in the first like four or five months of being an amputee because you deal with so many people staring at you and so many people wanting to know things and asking questions that it's completely overwhelming. And especially if you aren't comfortable with it yourself, if you're still trying to adjust to this new thing, this new identity, this new idea, it can be really too much to just be in public at all. I'm grateful that I had reasons that I had to leave the house because it kind of forced me to make peace with it. It forced me to become more comfortable, but not wanting to go outside for weeks or months on end is a very, very real thing for many amputees. I'd like to take just a moment to introduce you to our sponsor today, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network Service, that allows you to keep your information safe. I wondered for a long time if I really needed one of these, but being someone who often works on public networks in coffee shops or other public places, I quickly realized that yes, if I am not using a VPN, my information is not secure, and people who I don't want seeing it could potentially see it. So a VPN encrypts your online data, it protects your privacy, and Surfshark has over a thousand servers across the world that you can connect to. There are a lot of other perks of using a VPN. I'll direct you to their website to check those out. If you do click the link down below, you will get 83% off your first purchase or use code FootlessJoe Joe at checkout and you'll get an extra month free. So check them out and let me know what you think. Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's get back to it. Poppy, still not the way a kid's heart should look. Mm. Could be endocarditis. I'll do a biopsy. A uh, biopsy needle, please. And that's it. Is a medical freak show gold mine. They can't cut it. Nobody's cutting it. Robin's told her to stop saying that. No. I'm sorry, what? You all right? Ah. Oh. Okay, um. Give that to Pat. Stat, please. Oh, you know what? I'll take it. Alex, you take my place. The nurse can take it. No, I'd rather take it myself. Yeah, so standing on your prosthesis for hours at a time, I almost think is worse than walking because with movement, I mean, the, the pressure is shifting, you have some relief, you've got more blood flow, but just trying to stand gets really, really painful. I went to this work event once where we were standing on concrete floors for a couple hours and I kept trying to like shift my weight and kept trying to pretend like everything was okay even though it's not okay and making an excuse to get out of the room is something I can definitely relate to so you can sit down for a second and not deal with people's questions and just get some relief. Patients who undergo an amputation often feel sensation where the missing limb was. Yes, that is very, very accurate. Something I didn't know a whole lot about before amputation was phantom pain and phantom sensation, and I'm glad that they are covering this. There. The syndrome is called phantom limb. I'm really glad that they shot this scene in a way where the actual actress is running with both of her meat legs, as I like to call them, because that's very much what it feels like. As I'm sitting here right now, I have my prosthesis on, but I still feel the rest of my leg. I still feel my toes. I still feel my ankle, even though it's not there. Like the image that I have of myself in my mind is two fully functioning legs, even though that's very much not my reality. It's really bizarre. It's as if the body can't accept that a terrible drama has occurred. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good way of explaining it. It's like your brain knows that it's happened, but your brain can't quite communicate that to the rest of the signals in your body. And so you're feeling like nothing has changed, even though everything is different. And the look of surprise on her face in this scene, I feel like I can really relate to because there are some moments I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I don't have a leg. What is happening? Even though I'm fully aware that that's been the case for a little while now. Patients who experience phantom limb. What? What's wrong? Nothing but by far the most common. <sighs> is pain. Yeah, reaching for her leg like that, that doesn't exist anymore to try to like ease the pain, to try to rub it out like you would do on an actual, you know, attached appendage or limb. I, I definitely, definitely relate to that. There have been times where I reached for my ankle because it was in burning pain or my toes because it felt like someone was sticking an electrical rod against the, the bottom of them. When they're obviously not there, there are these habits that are built in that are kind of hard to change. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just, I'm really happy for Bailey. No, you're in pain. You've been standing all day here, sit down. You know, I really, I don't, I don't want to keep saying yes and then not following through with it, okay? I, re I really don't. No, I'm a jerk for putting pressure on you. And you know what? I think that I can try. I can try. It's just, I need to adjust this thing. Let me help. Kelly, okay, don't. I am an orthopedic surgeon. Let me try. Now, can you remove your pants, please? Yeah. 
Side note, clothes are really frustrating when you're dealing with any kind of lower limb amputation because you always have to like take them off to change out pieces and to you know add another layer to make it more comfortable or to take that off or to have someone check it out or whatever. So I live in Colorado where it's cold a lot of the times and I'm always wearing shorts so I don't have to deal with that. But I mean, I wanna wear jeans, I wanna wear leggings and it can be really frustrating to like find the balance when it comes to clothing. Whoa, that's not fixing it, that's that's taking it off! Listen to the rain and it doesn't sound the same when it is fun. The silence in your roar. Look at me. Talking anymore, Look at me. I'm gonna put my hand on your leg. No, Kelly, don't. Until I come undone. It's the sound of a heart getting louder, being like a heart. Like a Prosthetic is not the problem. Your legs, your problem. I deal with residual limbs every single day. It's, they get sore. Having someone else, especially someone who knows you, who isn't just a doctor, touch your residual limb is a weirdly intimate and way too up close and personal contact sometimes. Like, I'm not super ashamed of my leg, I'm fine with it. But having people who actually know me see it uncovered is still really uncomfortable. Like most friends I have, I don't think I've ever seen it for more than like a second. If I'm changing out my prosthesis or something like that, I always have it covered, I always have like a shrinker on, which is like this really tight piece of fabric that helps with circulation and helps with shaping and all of that. But it is, uh, I, I watch that and I feel her discomfort viscerally like I, I get it it is really weird to have someone see you and touch you yeah it takes a while to become okay with that i'm not there yet she is asleep oh, oh, oh. mother Did you um massage my leg again <laughs> oh yeah that's a really sweet scene. I'm glad they included that. Intimacy after amputation, I think is different for absolutely everyone, but it does have an impact on things, obviously. Mostly for me, it just took me a really long time to actually accept that I was still attractive or still desirable. It's, it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. And getting comfortable enough with yourself and your partner to go there again can take a minute, but is really important. I just need to hear it again. Tell me that you think this is the right idea. I mean, yeah, you want to like double and triple and quadruple check before making that kind of a call. I do. Dr. Torres has done everything that anyone could do to stop your pain, but- It's not working. And by every indication, more surgery will just mean more time in a hospital bed, more scarring, and the same results. Pain for the rest of her life. She'll never run. I'll never walk her down the aisle. Not unless we amputate. Instead of the surgery that you have scheduled for today, okay. please schedule a double amputation. Thank you, Daddy. I don't know the full context of this scene, but I feel like it's so important because it illustrates something that's very accurate. Oftentimes the people around you have a harder time adjusting to the idea, at least initially, especially when you're talking about an elective amputation, which is what this is. They're talking about, you're gonna be in a ton of pain and not be able to walk or run, or we can amputate. Amputation to the person experiencing it is like, this is freedom. I, I could be out of pain. I could be doing things, obviously. It's super complicated and overwhelming and complex, but there's a way out. But for people on the outside who aren't feeling that pain, who haven't gone through what you've gone through, it can seem like an utterly ridiculous idea. It can seem like it'd be much better to keep your leg than to ever take it off so that you could be in less pain or able to do more. An amputation is obviously a very severe thing. You're losing a part of yourself forever. <laughs> you can't take that back. Given the very crappy choice, some people would want to live in pain because it's too much to lose that. And a lot of other people don't want to do that. And so they go through with the amputation. And I'm glad that they illustrated the scene to sort of show the difference between those two. Oftentimes it's the people around you who don't know how to handle it even more than you don't. All right, guys, so let's make sure that we check pulses every two hours. I'm gonna go talk to the parents. Oh! 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 
Everybody out. Uh, I say get out. I hate watching that. I hate watching that because I have felt that pain and shame of falling in front of other people. Uh, I had a really bad fall in a restaurant that led to many more issues with my leg. And when I fell, it hurt like hell. Like it was horribly painful but I started sobbing in public, not only because of the pain, but because so many people were there and staring at me and watched what just happened. And it feels absolutely so shameful to not be able to stay upright, to not be able to walk like everybody else around you is, is doing, even though you're adjusting to this major thing, even though it's to be expected, even though it's not entirely uncommon for falls to happen, you're learning to walk on a totally new part of you. It makes you feel utterly, and I cannot stress this enough, Helpless. You okay? <laughs> Robins, are you hurt? Did you hit your head? I was, I was so proud of myself for getting through today and the surgery and like nothing was different. And I was such a big shot that I went and put all my weight on my left foot. <laughs> I don't have a left foot. <laughs> You should, you should see the look on your face. <laughs> are, you gonna, are you gonna help me out? Yeah, come on. I think getting to the point of being able to laugh at yourself and getting to the point of humor is so freaking necessary. Laughing and jokes and humor in general have been a huge part of my mental and emotional recovery journey. Okay, Grey's Anatomy, Arizona Robbins, I am going to give you a 90% on accuracy. I think the emotional journey is very spot on it, what is illustrated in these scenes. Um, I really appreciated a lot of the elements that they included, that they didn't make it look like a walk in the park, that they didn't make it look like everyone is instantly okay and inspirational in doing things because that's just not the reality of the situation. Some of the, the physical aspects of how they portrayed things were not entirely accurate, but I mean, that's gonna be the case for any TV show about basically anything. But I really appreciate seeing this character's journey and dealing with bitterness and dealing with frustration and all of that because it's such a real part and you don't really see that portrayed very often in media. Oftentimes you see the highlight reels of amputation. You see Olympic runners and motivational speakers, but you don't see or really hear about the depth of what it was to get there. And I like that they showed some of those harder, darker moments and those you know, interactions with other people. So good job, Grey's Anatomy. I appreciate you doing a decent job of representing us amputees. Okay, so I really enjoyed doing this. I'd like to do it again. Let me know what TV show or movie or video I should review for amputee accuracy next in the comment section down below. I think maybe Stronger, the movie Stronger, would be a good one to review next, but I'm actually not even sure how many amputee characters there are in media, so if you know of some, please leave them down below. I'd love to check them out. Thank you so much for hanging with me for a few minutes here today. I really appreciate it. You could be anywhere in the world doing anything, and you chose to hang out with me for a little while, and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much to my patrons for making these videos possible, for supporting me in so many ways, especially through this time, and to you watching this video. Thanks for being here. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you, and I will see you in the next movie video. My brain is fried. Love you guys. Bye. Have her from the sky all about.